Well, I mean, isn't isn't that also the story of risk versus risk? I mean, is that simplicity? There's something about simplicity that us, us in this evolutionary process is valued. If it's yeah. simple, it's uh, gets it spreads faster. It seems like, yeah. or is that not always true? Not always true. Yeah, it could be simple is good, but too simple is bad. So why did risk win? You think so far? Did risk win? <laughs> in the long arc of history, maybe we, we don't know. So who who's going to win? What what's risk? What's risk? And who's going to win in that space? In these instruction sets, oh, AI software is going to win, but there'll be little computers that run little programs like normal all over the place. But but we're we're going through another transformation. So, but, but you you think instruction sets underneath it all will change? Yeah, they evolve slowly. They they don't matter very much. They don't matter very much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the the limits of performance are, you know, predictability of instructions and data. I mean, that's the big thing. And then the usability of it is some, you know, quality of design, quality of tools, availability. Like right now, x86 is proprietary with Intel and AMD, but they can change it any way they want independently. Mm-hmm. Right, ARM is proprietary to ARM, and they won't let anybody else change it. So it's like a sole point. And RISC V is open source, so anybody can change it, which is super cool. But that also might mean it gets changed in too many random ways that there's no common sub- subset of it that people can use. Do you like open or do you like closed? Like if you were to bet all your money on one or the other, RISC V versus it? No idea. It's case dependent. Well, x86, oddly enough, when Intel first started developing it, they licensed it like seven people. So it was the open architecture. And then they moved faster than others and also bought one or two of them. But there was seven different people making x86 because at the time there was 6502 and Z80s and you know 8086. And you could argue everybody thought Z80 was the better instruction set, but that was proprietary to proprietary to one place. Oh, in the 6800. So, so there's like five different, four or five different microprocessors. Intel went open, got the market share because people felt like they had multiple sources from it. And then over time, it narrowed down to two players. So why you as a historian, uh, why, why did Intel win for so long with, uh, with their processors? I mean- They I, were maybe, great. Their process development was great. Uh, so it's- just looking back to JavaScript and Brandon Ike is uh, in Microsoft and Netscape and all these uh, internet browsers. Microsoft won the browser game because they aggressively stole other people's ideas like right after they did it. You know, I, I don't know if Intel was stealing other people's ideas. They started in making- In a good way, stealing in a good start, way, just to clarify. Yeah, they started making RAMs, random access memories. Yes. And then, at the time when the Japanese manufacturers came up, you know, they they were getting out competed on that and they pivoted the microprocessors and they made the first, you know, integrated microprocessor oh, grant programs. It was the uh 4004 or something. Who was behind that pivot? That's a hell of a Andy, pivot. Andy Grove. Huh. And he was great. That's a hell of a pivot. Right. And Harvard. then they led semiconductor industry, like they were just a little company, IBM, all kinds of big companies had boatloads of money. And they out innovated everybody. Out of innovated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like marketing. It's not and, any other and stuff. Their processor designs were pretty good. Um, I think the, you know, Core 2 was probably the, the first one I thought was great. It was a really fast processor. And then Haswell was great. 